Hi guys, it's Misha and welcome back to my channel. So today I want to talk about why young women in particular are so susceptible to falling victim to this woke indoctrination that is clearly going on in our society, especially when it comes to transgenderism. Overdiagnosing gender dysphoria, it's quite obvious that this is happening predominantly to younger teenage girls. And of course I want to talk about Abigail Schreier because she wrote the fantastic book called Irreversible Damage. It's about the trans movement and teenage girls and I want to talk about some of her findings she talked to a lot of people, interviewed them, and looked at the statistics. And I think that her findings and her discoveries are really important, yet we don't talk about it and mainstream media tries to hide it a lot from these girls, the very girls that are going into a therapist's office and you know can talk to them once and get uh, approved for surgeries and uh, hormones even if they don't actually have gender dysphoria. Before we get into this guys, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my videos. So young women, you know, feel a really strong need usually to conform and also fit um, in with a group, a community. Of course, men feel this as well, but this is much more important to most women. Um, I know that a lot of feminists will like to say, well, that's a stereotype, you know, that's sexist. Uh, but it's, if you look at the general picture, you can see that women value that more than men, okay? And I think that we can acknowledge that, that men and women have differences when it comes to relationships. So this plays a huge role in what's going on with this transgenderism because you want to fit in with your group. And if your group is saying that you know, they are they them or non-binary, whatever, uh, you start thinking, well, I can't be the only one that's not they them. <laughs> it's a very basic observation that we can all see. And, um, you know, it doesn't happen to all women. That's not the case with all women. Some women have a more stereotypically masculine uh, personality or temperament and vice versa, right? And that's fine. But we can look at the big picture and make a conclusion that a lot of women tend to behave this way. And with the sexism thing, a lot of us have this strong need to disprove any stereotype, even if it's true. And I was guilty of this when I was on the left. Um, I would just get really defensive. Like if someone said, oh, women typically behave this way or, or like this, I'd be like, no, actually, actually, I don't like that. Or I do this differently. I'm sure a lot of young women can relate to this, uh, but yeah, it's like an automatic defense. And it's honestly really sad if you think about it. We are programmed to shut down any conversation where women are said to be more feminine. <laughs> it's like we view femininity as this weak, you know, bad, bad, negative thing. And I think that's honestly sexist. This is why we have this feeling that we have to prove to the world that it's something to overcome. Um, as uh, like we're viewing being a woman as this negative thing, inherently bad. And that to be successful and to be happy in society, we have to be more like men. I think that's really sexist. I don't understand why modern day feminists don't see that. What happened to all the beautiful things associated with being a woman? Now there's some shame associated with it. It's really, really sad. These constant voices telling you, you can do anything a man can do in the same exact way that a man can do it. You can do it, you can do it uh, in careers and relationships, all this stuff, but do you want to do it? Will it make you happy as a woman to do something just because a man is doing it and you feel like you have to prove that you can do it? You can probably do it, but like, do you want to? <laughs> or is it that we have different interests as women, typically, not always, but most of the time? And to pretend to be something we're not, to prove something to men, it's so backwards. It's like forcing women to have a certain lifestyle and we're being brainwashed into thinking we have something to prove. If you don't really want to make a certain career move or you're not into this hustle culture, you feel like you have to do it um, to prove yourself. A girl boss, feminist, whatever. <laughs> but we're ignoring that a lot of women are unhappy doing these things. And again, not just with your career, but in relationships, um, hookup culture, right? Women all decided, hey, it's very liberating to sleep around because men are doing it. And if men can do it, well, obviously women can do it too. And instead of recognizing that hookup culture and is, is preventing a lot of people from entering meaningful relationships, both men and women, and that it's not um, all about instant gratification, life you know, isn't about that, if you want to live a happy, fulfilling life, instead of going, oh yeah, this isn't the best thing for most men and women, instead they went, oh yeah, well, if a man is doing it, I can do it too, and then I'll be liberated and happy. And we're seeing the exact opposite 
Okay, women are miserable. <laughs> so it's really unfortunate that modern day feminism is lying to women and telling them that this will make them feel liberated. And we're seeing that both men and women are more miserable now uh, with suicide rates skyrocketing, anxiety, people are dating a lot less. With this rise of uh, online dating apps and messages and stuff, a lot of things get lost in translation. People don't end up having these intimate conversations. And so that leaves people feeling really lonely and in search of a community that they can belong to. Women are constantly being told, chase the money, chase the money. Uh, it's the most important thing. So obviously there's this imbalance between masculine and feminine energies. You're constantly telling women that they have to be more like men and you're telling men that they have to be more like women. Like healthy masculinity is also frowned upon. But we need men and women to function in society. Uh, one is not better than the other. Both are equally as important, but where are different? And now onto the topic of transgenderism. A lot of young women see this as the cure, right? It, this will fix all your problems. Because if you're constantly told that being a woman is difficult and you have to work even harder than a man, right? You don't get paid the same amount of money for the same job. All these lies that modern day feminism instills into your brain. Of course, women will think that, oh, if I just change my gender, things will be infinitely better for me. And then we have teenagers and even children now being taught that this is a really easy fix. You can go on puberty blockers, which are completely reversible, which isn't actually the case. Um, but you can do that. You can then go on estrogen or testosterone and then get surgeries. And then we have women now saying that they are non-binary simply because they don't fit into the stereotype of, you know, a perfect woman. So if they're not totally stereotypically feminine, you know, maybe they're tomboy or androgynous, they are told that they are non-binary or trans. And then a lot of them go through surgery, which is crazy because you could be gender fluid. To, you know, one day you think that you're a man or and then the next you're a woman. So you go through all these surgeries and you're left with these permanent changes to your body and then you could change your gender. And Jordan Peterson talks about this a lot too, but a lot of uh, children and teens that end up transitioning and then detransitioning actually discover that all along they were just gay and they could have lived like no surgery or anything as a gay individual and that's all. And instead they go to these therapists who have to affirm that they are transgender and you know give them the green light to go get all these surgeries or else they can have their license taken away from them. It honestly scares me to think what I could have done with that information as a kid. Like when I was 10 years old, you're telling me that you know I, I could be told that I was a boy if I liked more stereotypically masculine things, I could have went, oh yeah, if I could be a boy, because that's what they're teaching kids now in school. It's like, oh, your gender is what you feel inside. I could have said, I like sports. I don't really like dresses or dolls. Maybe I'm a boy. And then I could have gotten hormone therapy. That is insane to me. As kids, we're playing, you know, pretend and saying we have superpowers and we could be pretending to be you know animals or something and you're and you're telling children that they are could actually be a member of the opposite sex and that we should listen to them if they say so no questions asked and give them access to hormone therapy or surgery and back to abigail she makes a great point if we're becoming so accepting of trans people then why is the suicide rate still going up suicide rates are going up but if these women who were living under a prior, you know, supposedly these all these transgender, these real transgender people who are living under a more repressive regime and are now just finding themselves, this, you would think the suicide rate would be going down with greater acceptance. And another thing that we're not allowed to question um, is why is it that it was a small percentage of males transitioning to females? Now it's this huge percentage of uh, predominantly teenage girls transitioning into men. It's a complete flip, right? And not even like middle-aged women transitioning if we're so accepting and now people can transition. We also know that between 2016 and 2017, the number of um, females requesting gendered surgery in the United States quadrupled. In Britain, where they have centralized um, medical care, they, they can tell you that the number of young women being referred for gender treatment has um, exploded over 4,000% in the last decade. She also talks about how she believes that social media plays a huge role in this. And I completely agree with her. Things like, you know, Instagram and back then Tumblr. We saw this with things like anorexia and how young girls are impacted by these social media apps. 
encouraging this behavior and affirming their body image issues. She also talks about how these girls don't have a way to be oppressed, which I 100% agree with. A lot of these white teenage girls will really, really want a way to be oppressed because everyone else is talk constantly talking about how you know they're oppressed because of their race or their gender or class or whatever. So you can easily say you're non-binary because apparently that doesn't really have a definition. You can just claim to be non-binary and you are, and then boom, you are now oppressed. Congratulations. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm gonna end the video, guys. Uh, please comment down below your thoughts on this. If you have any ideas on why this is happening, uh, to young women in particular. And remember to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye.